Hi, and welcome to uh, the introduction for V-Ray and Maya. Uh, my name is Andrew Weidenhammer, and I'll step you through this bit by bit. Um, just before we start, let you know that the, the uh, documentation for V-Ray and Maya and the original Max documentation can be found at spot3d.com. Everything we go over will, is definitely available in here, just maybe not in such a friendly way. Uh, but definitely read. If you like reading, read this. Um, so let's cover this basically. Let's. Uh, th there's four major places you're going to interface with uh, V-Ray in Maya. Uh, that would be the render globals. You'll find uh, when you switch to V-Ray, you'll have some uh, some tabs and controls. I'll go over those in, in this video briefly. Um, the other places you'll find are materials. Usually uh, V-Ray materials will be the top at any given section. So under the textures, you'll see V-Ray dirt, V-Ray parameters, and, and, <coughs> and the shaders, of course. So that's two. The third would be uh, uh, assigning attributes to existing objects. So if you have an object selected, you can apply uh, V-Ray specific attributes like displacement control, object IDs. Um, you can also assign attributes to material shading groups like uh, material IDs as well. Uh, and the fourth type is the create V-Ray type where you can uh, create V-Ray proxies, create specialized V-Ray textures, fur, um, turn selections into lights, and the most commonly used would be to apply single or multiple object properties to a selection. And we'll go over that as well, but uh, let's just start in this video with render globals. So in the uh, v, uh, render globals, you'll see V-Ray common tab actually replaces Maya's common tab. Um, this is because uh, Chaos Group has added a few features to the common tab, like uh, image format output options, where you can specify compression and various parameters for your file outs. There's also the batch render camera. Make sure to set that when you uh, send out a VR scene or a farm render. And use the V-Ray frame buffer as an added feature, which uh, is very cool. You'll see how that's used in an upcoming tutorial. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the next tab over is the main V-Ray tab. Um, we'll go over image sampler in a moment. But the uh, first rollout is a quick, uh, quick set of uh, globals where you can toggle on and off displacement and uh, this is a nice feature render viewport subdivision where if you tap 3 in Maya you'll subdivide an object um, in V-Ray treats that and converts that to a sub D so that conversion in a complex scene can take additional time so it may slow down um, more sizable scenes so for those I might suggest using a, a mesh smooth and manually controlling that instead of this feature. But for smaller scenes, this feature can be very handy and very time-saving. The rest of these globals are pretty utilitarian, like toggling on and off lights and reflection, refractions, and uh, global depths. <clears throat> and you'll, if you're familiar with Mental Ray, I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of that stuff. Um, so after the global options, you'll get to uh, the image sampler. The image sampler is uh, a complex area, it ha but uh, we'll briefly go through some of this. There's three main modes. The uh, traditional uh, original mode is adaptive subdivision, which is an all-around um, good way of, of sampling an image, um, but it has been updated with a couple other modes. The adaptive um, deterministic Monte Carlo mode is uh, sort of uh, the more interesting way of going about it and, and I'll discuss this in very specific detail when we go over the, the what we call the Niederhorst settings and uh, but it basically works similar to Mental Ray where it's a contrast threshold and anytime uh, a pixel adjacent pixels are over this contrast threshold Mental uh, or V-Ray will uh, adaptively sample further up to the maximum subdivisions um, the other mode is fixed rate. Fixed rate is pretty straightforward. It will sample uh, one sample per pixel and is very controllable. At this level it's low quality and fast render. So in a practical level I will often toggle between adaptive DMC for production rendering and fixed rate for test renders. 
So the next rollout down is the environment. Um, you can toggle this on to uh, to um, assign different. You can assign different texture maps to each one of these slots. But uh, the nice thing is that they're separated out from background texture versus GI dome versus uh, reflection and refraction texture. These are also viewable in the viewport, um, so that's very handy. Uh, the environment is, if you use the sun and sky system, the sun and sky will automatically pipe uh, information into these environment slots too, so uh, we might as well go over that really quickly. If we create a sun and sky system, you'll tug hit both buttons to generate uh, the full sun and sky system. Uh, you'll see here is the the gizmo for controlling the sun and sky angle and you'll notice that each one of these environment slots have been piped information from the sun and sky system and it automatically hooks that up for you so the next uh, rollout down is color mapping now color mapping is uh, most applicable to when you're working in a linear uh, or a float or linear workspace uh, workflow that is very easy to do in V-Ray uh, comparatively so uh, to do that very roughly you toggle on linear workflow which linear workflow will automatically adjust any uh, gamma input or uh, any gamma baked inputs like JPEGs any 8-bit images that have a uh, gamma baked into them linear workflow will invert the gamma based on whatever you set here in the gamma slot so you would normally want to fill that in with a 2.2 for linear workflow and that's basically it for linear workflow I'll go over some more specifics when we're working with the V-Ray frame buffer like don't affect colors and sometimes sub pixel mapping will speed things up when we're sampling brights but this is for later um, linear multiply is the mathematically correct mode for outputting uh, a linear image for later compositing. Um, is in linear multiply you want to keep that for compositing down the pipe but if you're rendering out beauty images and you don't plan on doing compositing you can use some of these other methods which are essentially tone mapping methods to uh, help bring down the uh, control the curve on how highlights blow out or don't blow out um, some of them are very nice, but uh, I usually let post work handle that, so uh, I would generally suggest leaving that on linear multiply. Um, you can adjust dark and bright multipliers, but leaving them at one is the default and, and proper way to go. So the, uh, the next one, camera rollout, is pretty straightforward. You can select uh, various types of cameras, so if you're doing specialized output, like fish eyes or uh, cylindrical um, and spherical distortions, you can do that. You can toggle on depth of field. Um, depth of field, you can set your focal distance. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, just be, just note that the aperture is the size of the aperture in uh, centimeters, I believe. I've pretty much V-Ray uses centimeters for everything and uh, will actively convert if, you've, if you're working in a different uh, um, unit. But uh, the aperture size, so the smaller the aperture would be, the, uh, the greater depth of field or the more would be in focus, which is sort of the opposite of f-stop. If you're expecting this to be f-stop, uh, if you want a lot of things to be in focus, you would, as a photographer, you might use an f-16, that is exactly the opposite in V-Ray. That would be a 16 millimeter um, or 16 centimeter aperture, which would is fairly impossible and would result in extremely blurry images. So one centimeter would be a fairly wide open aperture in the real world, and you'll see that works uh, creates a um, quite a bit of blur. So just know that the smaller this value, the more will be in focus. The other uh, toggle is motion blur. These settings are, are fairly standard and the defaults are very, very good for normal use. Uh, 